All right, so Dave, I've been working on this new D20 project, right? So it's a story, an anthology of our lives before we met, our entire history from birth all the point up to the present. Including... Stop. We're cutting to a clip. Wait, what? No! Oh, uh, that was a clip. You can't. You, of, of Sam. Really. I was doing a. I was showing you what's funny. I was. You're not funny. Cut to a clip! It doesn't work when I do it. It's because I edit it. Fuck. <laughs> Hello. Oh, oh, that's gonna be the screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, now, right there. Hello and welcome to D20 yeah. Multiverse NBC's Wild Mount with myself, Oliver, and Dave. Rocking it out from our brand new set in southern Arizona. It's looking great. We've got a professional lighting, we've got some critical role memorabilia. All of that is a rock. Oh, actually, the last bit of it is, is right. We've got a new poster. <laughs> yeah. I ordered the poster, and I... now we've got Matt Mercer and all the crew here, <laughs> here. But we're not in Arizona, and the set is literally we just moved the couch from over there to. Yeah. <laughs> if you're watching this in Astral TV full colour and 3D, you will be able to see the radiant jealousy that's emanating from my form as he has the poster and I do not. <sighs> Sometimes I just want to get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> not uh, the way we do things, Dave. Anyway, so this is uh, the live episode. Yes. Um, they do one every year. I went to the f second one in Indianapolis. Oh and no, the second live show. The first one in Indianapolis. <laughs> and I always mention it when I can. <laughs> that's the jealousy meter. <laughs> I wish I had gone to that. That's a jealousy meter? Yeah. Hold up, there's a phone call for me. Uh, we're gonna cut. <laughs> and we're back! Hello! Sorry, that was that was a woman calling about some meat. <laughs> I want to clarify that, but I'm not going to. You know it's true too, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway. Any hoody the blowfish, we're back! Yes. Uh, I don't know if Dave's gonna watch that whole ramble that I, I just did when he was I edited it, that's, that's my job. Also, I got a new t-shirt. Brian Foster in 8 bit. Yeah, I've got a new t shirt. I'm trying to do a thing of actually having more than two t shirts, so now I've got four. <laughs> That's so good. I need a Mighty Nine t shirt. I'm yeah, I want that one. I'm, rock anyway. I'm rocking the, uh, the Vivisection Pikachu. We're wasting enough time. All right. Oh, when I talk about my shirt, it's wasting time. But when you well, it's because this is a critical role related. Well, so That's Pikachu. Just a freaking... Pikachu is. Go. Why? Because in Pokemon Origins, Matt Mercer does a voice. How, how's that related to critical role? He's the DM. That, that's the only one. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, we've got a live episode from Gen Con, episode 29. Yeah. It's absolutely wild, and yes. it's pretty much all combat. Yeah, it's all combat, and it's a bit of a dungeon crawl. Um, and you can kind of sum it all up, but there a lot does happen in yeah. the episode as well. Yeah. Um, it's called The Stalking Nightmare. Okay. That's the, the actual title. Um, so we, we dive deeper into the Sour Nest, yeah. into the... Um, Iron Shepherd's base of operations. The ones that have captured the party members and in hopes to retrieve them, the Mighty Nine travel with, of course, Suma Lee, aka Neela, mm. and Keg, aka Ashley. So Neela yeah. left last episode. Yeah. Um, so we've only got Keg. Oh, yes, um, yes. So we just remember Sorry, that. Sorry, I forgot that. Did you watch the entire episode? I did. Like, oh, I know where Neela is. <laughs> <laughs> and then in my head, I just put her in, like, transpired. Anyway, um, so, so kind of Frumpkin scouts ahead, and, and Kayla does a very, very good job of kind of scouting and yeah. staying very incognito the entire time. Yeah, great, so, great use of a familiar. Yeah, and he goes invisible. Yeah. He goes invisible for the majority of the episode, and it's kind of hilarious as things ensue about yeah. him being hilarious. Now, uh, Matt Mercer, in typical Matt Mercer style, has full-on battle maps all covered with paper, all mapped out, all Dwarven Forge gorgeousness and delectability. Um, so essentially, the, before they do anything, Caleb uh, sends from literally every room until mm. they've scouted everything, and then they win. Yeah, um, so Nock kind of goes ahead as well to, to scout. He's the worst rogue in the world. <laughs> um, so he bumps into a lackey pretty much immediately, and they have a bit of a fight with the lackey. Yeah, this is actually kind of a cool episode in terms of, well, A, it's a perfect forum for a dungeon crawl, a live episode. Uh, and then we've got some classical elements within that. The rogue has to sneak, the tank has to tank. And the healer has to pretty much carry the entire team. Yeah, and if you haven't watched this uh, the uh, series before, Ollie says classical a lot. That's my classic a phrase. And he says classical all the time. So every time he says classical, give him some crap for it. <laughs> because I'm burnt out from it. I think actually in one episode you had a classical counter. Yeah. That popped uh, up. I, uh, yeah, and then I realized I'd had to do that every. And I was like, nah, I'm, not <laughs> I'm just going to continue drinking my classical cola. Quiet. Mm. Um, so the fight that some of the iron lackeys are pretty much just guards. Yeah. Um, now, Bo easily takes one out, and the other one tries to run away, and Clay kind of. Yeah. Cataclysm. 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 
Mr. Clay? Col- Coleco Vision uh, Clay um, has some real cool moments in this, and he actually has a lot. You can tell he's a lot different from uh, from Molly at this point. You can see the badassness, the kind of grave cleric, very emoish goth thing, like shines through in this, which I think was fantastic. Mm. Um, and rip, not can't rogue. So after they take out the the lackeys, they see a strange blur. Yeah. And then roll very low perception to figure out what it is. Yeah, but it's strange and it's a blur. Yeah. <laughs> so essentially the party goes, okay, well, you know, we expect, it's Matt, we expect this, but here's something we weren't expecting. It's something yeah, like- so they they kind of, they see Ru- Ruza, Rosa, and Proto, um, and two more cages. Um, yeah. And Caleb kind of takes the lead throughout the entire episode. And I think the last battle yeah. he kind of had to stay back only because of how squishy he was. This but is true. Um, yeah, he took a big lead. You can you can see him kind of coming into his command. Uh, we had Keyleth emerge in uh, Critical Role 1 as a kind of unlikely leader. Um, no one really guessed that she would be the one to take the reins of that. And it seems like in Jester and Ford's absence, Caleb is, yeah, taking the forefront. He's, yeah. he's not overbearing the party at all, but he is kind of driving um, a lot of the... Uh, Attempts. It'll, it'll be interesting to see whether it continues once when they Ford get back. is back. Because I, I, I don't think Jester is much of a leader. Ford is more of a leader than yeah. Jester, so yeah. I think Ford is going to be the one kind of ha- has to decide whether to take a step back or not. Well, a lot of conversation on Reddit about Jester and Are now you a crazy th- Reddit theory. Is that the I, moment? Oh, well, we could do one now if we want. I wasn't going to. Well, is it? Oh, you weren't going to? No, no. This is just a thing about Reddit. Um, oh, <laughs> with Kenakeus coming in as uh, a grave player. This is two crazy non. Reddit theories in a row. Oh, I've got I, one. Oh, you've just got not one. Not for this moment. Oh, I kind of ruined that, didn't I? <laughs> Continue. No, it's fine. Um, yeah, there's been a lot of talk because Jester didn't seem to really embrace the role as a healer too much. She kind of saw it as something that's been put upon her as part of her class, but it wasn't really her desire. I guess she didn't really feel it too much. So they, what they reckon is that uh, Jester is going to take a, an attack cleric kind of path. She's going to buff out her other spells and and kind of get in there as a bit of a DPS. And Catechaeus, uh, uh, ColecoVision, is going to take the role as the healer, as, yeah. the, as the Grave Cleric. It's going to be interesting to see whether they do that. Oh, and thank you for correcting me. I did think that Grave Cleric was from Unearthed Akana, uh, but no, apparently not. It's from Xanatar's Guide, um, and it appears in Unearthed Akana as well, but thank you for correcting me. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the problems that we have. Uh, we pick comments <laughs> before the show and don't show each other which one we're going to read out. He just read out my comment at the end. <laughs> oh, really? So there's no <laughs> way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it up here whose comment it was, but thanks for ruining it, <laughs> well, I, don't I know. really appreciate that. <laughs> now, now you're going to have a comment at the end, and I'm not. Quick, get on your phone. Here, use mine. No, we're going to continue. My lock screen is not, by the way. I- <laughs> God, nobody I, cares. I'll have to credit the artist. <laughs> um, so yeah, we've basically got scared out the map, and then we go in, not sneaks, tries to sneak. <laughs> um, we have already beat the Iron Lakers, come on. Let's yeah, okay, go. we go forward, uh, we see a bird. Yeah, we see a bird. And now, this was hilarious, because they go, Matt's like, it's a black bird with a silver rod in its mouth, Yeah. and about... 400 of the 2600 critters. I don't think he all of them worked it out. <laughs> I think they knew beforehand. It I, seems a very kind of, out of everything that's happened... <laughs> they'd remember that. That they would remember the, the bird that I was think, attached to... Sh- 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 what was Shikasta. Name? That's I, it, I, I can't think, pronounce it. I think what happened is it was like a comic book guy from Simpsons moment where one person in the crowd that was the massive critter fan was like, oh my god, I don't know who that is. No. And when he went, ah, oh, everyone else kind of went, I, I ah. Don't, I don't think so. I think some of them saw it before the show began. Because yeah. there was no way half a crowd could immediately go, oh, we know who's about to turn <laughs> up. Shikasta. Yeah, out of all the players, yeah. that ha- all the guest players that have been, yeah. they'll be like, oh yeah, it's going to be the, re- the, I was, o- the I was, first time a returning ca- uh, guest character to this yeah. campaign is going to just show up. <laughs> I was watching this I with didn't like Julia. It. <laughs> I was watching it with Julia and Julia goes, what? What happened? What? I missed it. What? And I like, I tried to play it off like I knew. I was like, oh, that was uh, just because um, it was a bird so they knew that it was and then he came on the screen I was like, Shikasta. It was Shikasta. Yeah. yeah, yeah, totally yeah. Got it. Totally but got you know it. the bird's name? Sh- uh, yeah, Grand Duchess. No, Grand Duchess Anastasia Nicolodutun. I'll put it up on the screen. <laughs> We can't do names. It's amazing. I can't do names. You do well, but you never write them bloody down. I can do names. I just can't say phenomenon. Phenomenon. You can say classical, right? I'm not sure. <laughs> um, so anyway, Sh- Shikasta appears. Yes. Out of nowhere. Um, and he's in one of the cages. Um, yeah. He, he's actually been captured by the Iron Shepherds. Yeah. So immediately the party's like, uh, very useful ally. Need him. Let's free him. Kari Platon is, is the char- as the actor who plays him. Who's an absolute badass. He's on Walking Dead. He mm. plays, he plays the, the king. And oh, I wish that show was better. 
really do. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, I wish that was still around. Uh, but no, are, I just wish it was. But you know, I'm a huge fan of the comics. You've yeah. seen them all. And no, it's, it's, it's just. You it should hurts. see his room. It's terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. Gimp masks everywhere. Anyway, um, we have. Uh, we you have. Didn't you tell them that? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, so we have a, a, another a battle with uh, Raza. It's R U Z Z A. I found out. Yeah. Raza. I thought it was like uh, Raza, like Raza. I thought it Rusa. I thought it was R U S A. You know, like the the chick from uh, Greece. Raz, Raz, I like how we don't actually talk about the episode. We say like a sentence. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, we also get oh, and so, Proto. So yeah. Raza and Proto. We have and another battle. Not does actually manage to pick some uh, DC twenty locks with a twenty, mm. which was cool. Right at the at the difficult, very difficult DC twenty five above that, extremely difficult, and thirty is classed as near impossible. Mm. Um, so Shikasta kind of um, joins the battle as well and uses um, the. Was it Sacred Weapon is what they call it? Yes. Uh, yeah. Sacred uh, spirit, spiritual, spiritual, spiritual Weapon. Spiritual Weapon. And Nafatiti, who somehow exists in this world. <laughs> Which was kind of strange. And at one point, uh, Julie was like, who's that person in the background? And I was like, that's a... That's a and that's Nafatiti. Did that's you hear Nafertiti. like what his explanation of why? Yes. What? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> why say yes when I literally <laughs> announce I'm waiting Christian. for the day where you just believe me. No, I was like, yes. Fine, and then we can just carry on. <laughs> it would make a pointless conversation, or oh, yes. <laughs> and this conversation is has a complete point. Anyway, he he, fe- he saw Nafatiti in the lobby. Oh, that's right. So and he thought it was a good idea. Just I do. I did it. actually remember that. that was I just cool. didn't remember that. I remembered. Yeah. Um, I had written down and underlined. Uh, players are really playing their role. Mm. Um, they are doing not necessarily the tropes, but certainly what they're designed to do. The rogue is sneaking. Um, Caleb is using his familiar. The warlock is using the familiar to, to scout. They're mm-hmm. really playing the, the classical nature of their characters. Anyway, as we continue on, um, Bo, Caleb, and Clay get trapped because um, basically they trigger a little little thing to fall down and kind of lock them in the room so the party's kind of separated for a brief time which is a great element to add to a dungeon crawl you want to separate your players and have them figure out their own things I remember um, in one game uh, they all got put oh wait that was in the Dungeons and Dragons cartoon they all got put individually to fight their greatest fear do you remember that? We yeah let's not that. talk about that because it's not about this <laughs> um, I got Nafatini slamming ass so Sakasta's so, uh, so really kind of really weird way to put that well that's what he said and that's what I wrote down. And also, the next line is Kig arouses Bo. Yeah. So constantly throughout the entire episode. <laughs> constantly getting aroused. There's nothing wrong with that. No, it's fine. And tons and tons of support for the hashtag Keep Keg. Mm. A lot of people want Keg to join the party. Well, they did have sex at the end. That was awesome. Well, I we didn't see it. I recorded that. I've got it on my phone. I fall asleep to the well, audio. It's kind of perverted one. and kind of sexual I'm harassment. To it that, now. That's a hashtag Me Too kind of story right there. It's kind oh, of yeah. inappropriate, Ollie. Yeah, slower. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Anyway, um, it's just bloody we have... creepy, Ollie. <laughs> what? I mean, it's good for a joke, but you kind of took it a little bit too far to be on a phone call listening to the Keg and Bo sex tape. Do you realise that's what you just did? <laughs> I don't know. I'm tired. Then keep going and All finish right. the damn so, episode. Um, uh, Caleb has, uh, uh, Frumpkin, as a spider, and the spider gets attacked and killed, and Caleb swears revenge. I just had that as a notable moment. Yeah, um, and, and throughout that kind of uh, going for Rosa and um, Pr- uh, Proto kind of retreat back into kind of um, kind of an, another chamber, you could say. Yeah. Shikasta uses a really cool spell which gives everyone plus five maximum hit points and, 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 and to some temporary hit points. That was amazing. I didn't know that uh, he could do that. Um, that is very useful. Mass heal, essentially. Mm. Um, so not opens the opens the gate and allows him to kind of continue through. Yeah. Um, he also finds a she. Sorry, finds a trap. It manages to disarm and kind of move it out of the way. Continuing the theme of nailing your class. Mm. So um, after they discover this other floor, they send Frunken through, but they spot Frunken as a spider, shoots it with an arrow, and, and <sighs> vanishes. End of Frunken. Um, well, it goes to it's a fey animal. So, so back to the show. It's not end. It's <laughs> no. like not Bam. there anymore. Uh, I also get the wonderful phrase when uh, Bo and Keg are talking insults. They were trying to figure out what to call Lorenzo, uh, and we've got the wonderful phrase "Eat shit, fucko." I thought that was a, that was that's one of my that was wor- noteworthy. I wrote that down. That's good. Um, so anyway, <laughs> Lorenzo is taunting them throughout this entire time. It's worth yeah. noting, so yeah. just coming in and kind of mocking them. You could say it was very Briarwood. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. So essentially, they come up with a really cool plan, and this is a really cool use of two individual spells um, put together perfectly mm. because we've got Minor Illusion that not uses uh, and then we've got uh, 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 Keg uh, throwing her voice um, which is one of the skills that, that Keg has. And then I think um, Clay also uses 
Thermatology. 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 To make the, the voice sound a bit like lower. it was coming from. Yeah. Mm. So, wow, really cool uh, use of multiple spells for a single effect. Essentially, they, they run in a decoy. Yeah, but it turns out they kind of the decoy gets nuked by the time it was down there. And so, yeah. it's quite obvious they are kind of waiting for them. It kind of worked. How did it work? No, not really. Not in what you're you not really call... good with follow up questions. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like you state something like, "Oh, yeah. really? really? You're like, yeah. Basically, <laughs> what's going to happen when I die? I'm going to go to the gates of hell, and they're going to be like, "So, what was your life like?" And I'll be like, "It was this." Nobody cares, Ollie. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my new line. <laughs> Maybe you start going this Are you gonna ridiculous sing it thing. As well? Are you gonna uh, sing it? It will vary. Okay, it'll sometimes vary. you'll sing it. Okay, that's good. Uh, um, I've got half a page of notes here. Uh, Spirit Guardians, really cool spell. Uh, very, very. Let's cool talk about what spell. actually happens instead of spells. I, I, I like spells. Yeah, I know you do, but we'll talk about the fight beginning. So they kind of go downstairs and they begin oh, the, the second fight. Stop ripping It's okay, I got notes. it. It's fine, I can hold it like this. Right. Mm. Uh, the fight starts with uh, Rizzo and um, Proto again, yeah. um, down the floor below. Um, and Rizzo, uh, Lorenzo taunts again and actually appears. Yeah. He starts to fight back and we, we find out that he's actually an Oni. Which a lot of people predicted. Mm. Um, now there was, there was like a couple of theories going around, crazy Reddit theories. Uh, that there was a, there were vampire stuff involved because people had teeth and were licking their lips, but a ton of people actually called it. They, mm. A ton of people said uh, Lorenzo is an Oni, and we get it confirmed. We got that on our comments though. Yeah, I think someone mentioned that on our comments. So yep. yeah, good call. It was very good, and now, we'll explain what Oni is kind of later on. Yeah. So we also find uh, oh, um, and, and so in combat as well, Bo used starting starting a strike. A lot of people were like pointing that out to her that that's probably one of the most useful things in your arsenal and now mm. she seemed to have listened she's, she's in so this is a this is basically a boss battle we have Massive we have got two of the uh, members of oh sorry three of the members of the Iron Shepherds the last of the Iron Shepherds um, so we've got Lorenzo Ro Rosa and Proto yep. um, and Bo seems to knock out and kill uh, Proto and that's one gone yeah and just like an injury monk style very very cool um, but yeah so, starting strike we've got some uh, Bo and she cast KOs uh, cone of Cold. Now, Cone of Cold, I know Oh, that was brutal. I know yeah. this spell. Yeah. And when I heard, when I saw him bring out the cone, I was like, oh, don't be Cone of Cold. And then he goes, and Cone of Cold. And I'm like, oh my god, that's like 8d6. Yeah, the, he yeah. knocked out two players, Bo and Shakasta. 44. Yeah. 44 points of cold damage, which and is not even the most that, that can do. It could, it could have knocked out the other players too. Yeah, could have, really could have. Um, Caleb it. gets knocked around by Lorenzo as well, yeah. so that he gets really badly damaged to a point he kind of has to hold back for the yeah. majority of the battle. Yeah. And I was going to say something involving the word classic, and then my brain deleted the sentence from my mind, and now I can't remember what it was. Cool story, bro. Um, uh, okay, and we get Clay, not Clay, Caleb, Caleb gets or, that. Well, we're not. Are we going to there? Gonna, yeah, we're not there. He was going to say, This is going very well. A lot. <laughs> and it, it goes, I think Caleb is MVP for this episode. Yes, agreed. Yeah, um, a lot of people on our Discord as well, uh, Jason and Charles. Hi, guys. Thank you. Hey, guys. Um, if you guys want to join for that conversation, um, join our Discord because a lot of people talk about Critical Role there a lot. Mm. By, it's like five. Four. Yeah. Like you, me, the, there's two. Jason, Charles, Three. and there's Dez. Oh, Dez. Dez talks about stuff. Yeah, She's Dez awesome. Stuff. And there's a few other guys there, too. Yeah. But, just, yeah. So you, know. you should join and make us not feel like losers. Um, well, make us feel a little bit... Because we're still, like, you know, it's a little bit less. Like, losers, not much. But yeah. But, yeah, um, Caleb how, is the MVP. He took the lead. Yeah. Um, he nukes Lorenzo, spoiler alert, at the end. Yeah, um, he gets the how do you want to do this. Uh, even though Keg should have got it. It's true. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Caleb kind of, he really takes a role as, as, as not a malevolent leader, but certainly a strong leader. He kicks some ass in battle, knows when to be like, all right, I have to step back. There's yeah. nothing else I can do at this range. Yeah. And just nails it the whole episode. He just nukes everything. Yeah. Um, and, he and, also, and he played to his strengths and weaknesses. And he, he has to do his PSD, uh, PSD, I can never do those. PSD. Anyway. Thank you. Um, uh, acronym, um, but he rolls an 18, so it's all good. But um, So those that don't know up. his PSD thing, every yeah, time he deals with fire. PSD. PTSD. PTSD. I think every time he kills something with fire, is it? Yeah, every or just, I think sometimes even if he sees a bad enough fire. Oh, okay, yeah, you know. he just has to roll because of his past, kind of has, has traumatized him because he had to burn his parents. Which is quite, it's actually quite a cool character element. Anyway, um, they, they destroy him. <laughs> it's really hard to read it. Uh, they destroy I him. I wonder why, we find, uh, we find, we find Yasha. Also, also, not kills Ruzza. We should mention that. Not actually kill something as well. Yeah, manages to do some damage. And then we find Yasha and Ford, which is fantastic. All right, success just is there as well. Boom, boom, boom. I like the weird order you did that. 
Yeah. Because Jester and Ford were together, and yeah. Yasha was by herself, but you see Jester, 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 Yasha, Yasha and Ford, yeah. but they were even together. And then Knott says, case closed, which I think would make a great t-shirt. Um, and essentially then we've got the epilogue after the fight. I thought it was a really cool choice doing a, a really traditional dungeon crawl um, as, as, the, as the live show. Because, you know, the, the heavy roleplay moments, I think, wouldn't work as well in that kind of format. We want to we shout and cheer. Yeah. And you should also, uh, we should also say Sh- uh, Shikasta um, decide, decides to free all the people that are actually in the prison with them. Yeah. Um, so all the other prisoners that, that were locked up, they're kind of free. Um, and also Keg decides to have sex with Bo. I think that was very, very important. Um, but uh, we're also worth knowing that Keg's story isn't finished yet. Stop it. Because um, Keg's partner wasn't there. So yeah, that's there are a whole the reason problem. why Keg was doing this is to try and free... Um, her partner, and they went there. We also get uh, not giving Shikasta back the gold that Shikasta let not steal, and then Shikasta says, no one steals from me, I knew you had it, you can keep it, kind of thing. Mm. Which was kind of a fun moment. I yeah. Like that one. Um, but yeah, ultimately it was a good little boss battle. No one died, even though it, it did look dodgy there. Could have been possible with Kota Cole. And I think, it, I think Matthew deliberately did this live episode in contrast to the last one, because the last one didn't have any battling. Yeah. Uh, the last live episode. Yeah. Um, and this one pretty much all comprised of it so it was, it was actually for me as a historian um massively interesting <laughs> massively interesting to see to see something like dungeons and dragons work really really well in a live setting with people watching around the world absolutely invested in the story and the moments in a way that dungeons and dragons has never been seen before and i will mirror matt mercer's words back to all of us now which is this is a new age a new era in storytelling, and I 100% agree. Did I mention that I, I've seen them live? <laughs> I, I don't know if I've, I've put that out there. You know the t-shirts I always wear? I bought them at the live show. Because that's why the real one. Do you honestly think you could choke me? I'll choke the fuck out of you. <laughs> and creepiest line of the night goes to, I would choke the fuck out of you, but that's, in this, that's the episode. But we need to do other things, and I need to call it... Guardian. <laughs> <laughs> you need to call a guardian. You need to call a guardian. <laughs> call Help. Oh, God. It's just Yasha. It's just Bo anyway, and Kig. Now, because Ollie's stolen my comment. <laughs> Unintentional. Uh, yeah, I know it was an unintentional one, but you're still a dick. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ollie's going to bring up the co- comment for the week, apparently. It says, Ollie, please, 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 don't do a reach around on Dave. Oh, wait. No, that's the wrong comment. Sorry. Um, that was Bill Stevens. No, correct comment is Curtis Alice. <laughs> Curtis Alice, I like the fact that your name has a little bit of alliteration in it and I can see my phone's reflection on the poster um so Kurt Alice says ha ha well <laughs> he says other things as well okay <laughs> he says ha ha Catechaeus Clay but close enough because we butchered that name throughout the entire like, last let's, week's episode why couldn't, we, why couldn't you just agree with me just the Blame it on accents. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. It's New Zealand accent. Uh, it's part of our vernacular. We can't use... Yeah, we can't use English. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Deal with it. Catechaeus is also a very popular medical symbol. Did not know that. So you taught me something new, which is not... Yeah, hard, I thought it was the, like the natural kind of medical symbol. Uh, I found that fascinating. Yeah. So, that is NBC's Wild Mount. Uh, we'd like to just... Sh- uh, give it, a- it was a good episode. We should really just look kind of... at say it was a good episode before the episode would be three minutes long if we just talked about the episode because the rest is we the just box. haven't gone on that long so i'm just trying to drag it out a little bit. i just wanted to say thank you very much to our patreons uh we didn't think anyone out there watching we didn't a we didn't think anyone watched this stuff mm. um b we don't think anyone watching would like us enough to give us money and c i'm retiring to fiji once that check drops uh-uh just so you know, I'm in charge of the accounts, there's no he way. He won't let me near it. And no. I want to buy You don't even know how to log in <laughs> to the account. No. Yeah. But thank you guys very much. We're doing like an a- actual episode to thank you guys um, later on. But that's yeah. just a little quick thank you. And thanks for subscribing to the channel. And if you haven't, and you do, then it makes me happy. Nah, that's all he has. But if you have a comment <laughs> about the particular episode and you want us to mention it next week, leave a comment down below. Um, join our Discord. It's a good chat happening in there. It helps to kind of engage with us, know what's working, what's not. Yep. Um, at the end of the day, we do these episodes just to gas bag about Critical Role. And it's all good to have more people to gas bag about. It's just awesome having a forum of nerds from around the globe uh, or the, 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 the plate if you're a flat earther um, supporting a new era in storytelling. For myself, Oliver Dungeon Master and... Dave. We wish you a good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. I'm going to steal your poster. No, you're not. Late at night, while you sleep. That was a really short episode. Uh, No, I thought it was pretty good. No, it's it's only 20 minutes. Shall we just wrap? 
Yo, so come with that Joe, gonna no, bust the flow. Let's hang out. Hi, this is David. Oh, hi, Sarge. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I, 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 sent, I sent you the text because I wasn't sure whether that was the right number or not. Did you get that text? So Dave just off um, talking to some Colombian drug lords. Um, they're chasing a series of supercell agents uh, from across northern Canada um, in a sting operation that's been running for 14 years. Uh, it's a lot of undercover, and it's finally coming to fruition. They've you know, located his base, which is the abandoned shack behind a McDonald's, and um, essentially they are they're trying to catch and surround the perpetrator. Uh, Dave is obviously. CIA, um, you guys obviously could pick that up from these videos. Um, so yeah, he's, he's just taking care of some serious CIA business. Obviously the call is encoded, so you can't hear it. They have signal blockers and stuff on that as well. I myself am just a penniless hobo who happened to wander into this house at the right time. and He's been keeping me fed in the basement for the last 20 years, forcing me to watch episodes of... Dungeons and Dragons, and then comment on them on camera. You can't see the shackles, but they are electrified. So, I, this is my life now. Thank you for joining me. I'm drinking a liter of absinthe. I need it to forget uh, the torture. Every second week, Dave makes me watch Darkness Rising again. Dungeons and Dragons, very low budget movie, which he made me do a review of, which will be on the channel soon. <sighs> I ate discarded toenails from the other captives. Kind of meaty. Like black licorice. Sometimes I wonder what life would be like outside those walls. But I've resigned myself to the shadow and... You know what they say about Stockholm Syndrome? Well, it's true. You really do start to grow to love those people. It's an absolute perfect. I really appreciate your time. He's, he's back from the CIA Sorry, business. Bye. Cool! Sorry about that. As is traditional, I left you a message. Oh, cool. <laughs>